So today I'm going to just go over a few things, uh, really just kind of the starting of the assignment, but also how to install uh, particularly Revit 2026 and how you can get that, of course, free as a student. Um, you do actually have a free license, right, as an EDU account, right, of course, using your, your student account with Autodesk. Now, if you haven't made an account, you'll definitely need to, but we'll go over that uh, when we get there. Specifically, if you have an Apple with a silicon chip, right, so like any of the M1, M2, M3, M4, you can definitely use Parallels, VMware, and really any other virtual machine. So if you type in virtual machine, Mac application, uh, usually you can find them. And to be fair, you can even do this with Windows. A lot of people don't understand that you can take a Windows computer and do a virtual machine of Macintosh, right? So you can, it's called Hackintosh, funny enough. Uh, but you can actually do those kinds of things. I'm not sure why you would. It would probably run a little bit slow, uh, especially on an Intel chip. So one thing I would say is if you still have an Intel chip, you can go to and type in boot camp. And in our case, um, you'll, you'll follow these instructions in order to install Windows. Now, if you need a little bit more help, also you can get a, a free Windows copy. So Windows 11 ARM is the version you'll want to use for Parallels if you're on a Mac. If you are just on boot camp, you can just use a regular Windows 11 download. To be fair, there's usually actually a couple of options, especially if you're a student. Um, to be fair, usually the lowest version of like Windows 11 or Windows 10 is actually free to students. So kind of be on the lookout for those kinds of things if you don't already find the free version anyway. In fact, this one's Windows 10 version 22H2, which is good, and it's absolutely free. So again, you can get Windows 10 for free. And I honestly, I recommend Windows 10 over Windows 11 just because while they still support Windows 10, and Windows 11 is still a little bit buggy, especially when it comes to the GPU and, and things like that. So, of course, download this first and install via Boot Camp or Parallels. I'll be using Parallels today. It is about $88 a year with the student discount. Um, it's not actually that bad. You know, I get free updates and things like this. Of course, I already have Windows 11 installed. One thing I would say is make sure that you change and configure your settings. So for instance, what I like to do is use at least half of my processor. So if I have 12 logical processors, I'm going to go ahead and use six. And since I have 48 gigs of RAM, usually I use, you know, about half 24 or a little bit lower 20. Keep in mind that your memory actually includes your RAM and your GPU. Um, so the more you have here, uh, the worse it's going to work on the Mac. But, you know, you might not be using any programs in the Mac. So again, a good divide is nice. Graphic wise, really no settings there. Um, and really lastly, make sure that your hard disk is in the right spot. Um, usually you'll, you'll find where to set this up when you install Parallels. Keep in mind, you want to use the ARM version. Um, maybe I didn't make that quite clear. So if you're using Apple Silicon, make sure that you put the word ARM right after. That specifies actually the version type. And we do need the ARM64 in order to be ran on an Apple Silicon device. Right, so keep that in mind. And <laughs> it's also free. So uh, get it while you can, right, for sure. But that being the case, uh, what's nice is Windows 11 is not free unless it's the ARM version. It's, I don't know what it is, but it's kind of nice. Uh, but yeah, keep in mind that that only works on an M1, M2, M3, and M4. So I'm going to go ahead and press play here. We'll go ahead and boot up Windows 11. Funny enough, you usually don't get a screenshot of this because usually it's not running on a second computer. There I am. Never wanted my full name on the internet, but there you have it. And we're in Windows 11. So I actually have Windows, or sorry, Revit 2024. And to be fair, it's not a bad version. However, can somebody verify we have Revit 2026 on the school computers? Is that right? Just type in Revit real quick. Also, test Rhino again today. Uh, I found out what happened to all the servers. It was that lightning storm that happened. But it's 2026? 2025, all right. So I'll install 2025 today. I'd rather use the same version that you guys are using. To be fair, there's not a whole lot of differences between them, but it, it can get a little messy when you're trying to learn a program and your professor's teaching you in a different program. So technically speaking. You have 26 on this one? They should all have 26 is what I was told. You have 25? Well, that's, that's just wonderful. So we have a little bit of both. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and do 2026 just for the sake of uh, being new, I guess. And to be fair, all of these computers should have the latest eventually. So we'll go by that standard. Now, the first thing that I'll do is, I mean, to be fair, I could either do it in the Mac or Windows, but you'd want to hit your browser. In my case, I like to use Brave Browser. No, I don't sponsor them, but gosh, is it such a good browser. Uh, no more ads and that, that to me alone is, is awesome. So in our case, we're going to type in Revit 2026. I'm going to say student. It, really important that you kind of put that word student in there. At least it brings you access to the education downloads. Now, don't get me wrong. You could find it, but it's a little harder to find. So again, that education. First things first, I'm going to sign in. Definitely want to do that first. In my case, I already have an account with my EDU account. Hopefully I have the right password in there. And I need a code sent to my email. You'll probably have to do the same. Now, of course, you're not a part of all of colleges. Maybe not, but in our case, we definitely have a school and we want that free account. So we definitely want to go through all the steps. I'll take that copy, paste my code, and don't ask me again on this browser. I'll go ahead and get started. Oh my gosh, two-step verification. Well, that's what you get for using an EDU account. It really wants to make sure that it's you. All right, now what? Add verification code. Uh, Severet. Yep, yep, yep. One day you'll probably just scan your face or you'll just, you know, it'll just automatically know it's you all the time. Might be a strange world. Hopefully I can remember my password. Cannot add password. Well, that's convenient. Might be able to just press next. There we go. Six digit passcode. All right. Um, go back. That code. Adding a new token. Use this application to scan the QR code automatically. Yeah, but it's not coming up. Autodesk. Well, hopefully two-step verification doesn't stop you. This is kind of new. I don't know. Maybe there's people out there trying to get some codes. Tell them to just come to school. Obviously, I'll skip this part of the recording. Password something. All right, I got a code. All right, all right. Oh, damn, it's a timed code. Quick. Because there's so many people trying to get Revit, guys. Anyway, we got through. We got our verification going. And once you do, you'll go back to the page, and you will click on Revit. In our case, we'll want to make sure that we click on the right version. So today, we're going to click on 2026. Well, in my case, I'm going to click on student for today. Um, just because technically I can use either or, doesn't really matter there. It's just going to download the product and sign into my name anyway. Um, don't really want to give my address out there, so I'm going to go ahead and submit. We'll get a quantity of one. And we'll access products. A little different these days. It's kind of like a separate like download page. So it gets kind of weird. Add products and services, custom install, product updates. To be fair, I'm pretty sure this is like all the programs that I've clicked on that I want a license. So you basically have to tell 
Autodesk, which license do you want? You quickly get approved as your student account and you'll go down to Revit. So in our case, we want 2026, Windows 64, and let's spice it up today and do it in Korean. No, I'm just kidding. Let's go ahead and install. Of course, accept. Sign your life away. Make sure you read those things, right? You'd be surprised. There's been like some Sony ones that like if you send in a certain code to an address, they give you a free thousand dollars, but nobody ever reads it. They had to stop that immediately in 2007, but it's okay. They did a privacy policy change, right? Let's go ahead and put it actually somewhere nice. I'm just going to put it on my desktop. It's going to get deleted in anyway. And we'll go ahead and save that. It is a pretty lengthy install, especially if, say, the internet isn't you know running so well. Keep in mind that it essentially downloads 30 gigabytes from, it's like a video game, essentially. A little bit less than a video game. So if you're accustomed to that, you know that things can take an hour or two even just to download and install. So keep that in mind. I might not exactly install it on today's video, but of course, be enough to get us started and show you where I'd like you to access some of these files. So stay tuned. Obviously, we'll let that download. It should just be more like a executable file. It doesn't really do much yet. And it's more just like all the other programs today where it's more like an apparatus uh, for the installation itself. So in my case, I already double clicked on it, to be fair. Sometimes I don't know if I double clicked on it and it's still loading, so we'll give it a second. And yep, that was definitely the case. So it's going to load up some Autodesk. Interesting background they went with. Uh, I don't know, they seem to be getting simpler and worse, but that's just me. Yeah. They used to be so cool. They'd show off like the coolest part of Revit or something. Or, uh, maybe this is just the Autodesk one. I don't know. Obviously, it's going to find that we actually have an installation update going on. I don't know if I want to do that right now because I do want to show you guys, but I don't know, maybe it's really fast. Why not? Obviously, we'll choose the right area, which is Program Files Autodesk. Usually, those are set up by default, and of course, this is actually a good thing to keep in mind. Your content and your data is actually in a different place. Uh, you might want to write that down if, if you don't already have it memorized. Like app data is where you'd find it if you were in Macintosh versus, you know, it's really program data on Windows. And I know we're not really teaching a computer science class or anything, but being a little bit more familiar with the computer can definitely help. So we're going to go ahead and press install and hope for the best. Oh. We're back, and we do have Revit 2026 installed now. However, there were a couple of things to note for the Apple Silicon model. The first being, well, if you're running from an external hard drive, you may want to actually delete all the licenses and, of course, all the actual Autodesk files um, that are necessary to run all the licensing right? Especially if you're on a VMware. But to explain that a little bit better, let's go actually back to Autodesk and point out a couple things that I forgot to mention. Oh, let's see if we can go back. So of course you do have to sign in and you do have to pick a base uh, model if <laughs> if you just deleted your 2024 Autodesk like I did. In my case, i got to sign back in. And a couple things to point out. So I do have 2026 now, even though I was struggling a little bit with kind of all the versions because of my error, co error code 10. Now, some ways to avoid that, of course, is, well, specific specifically, um, you'll want to go to a couple of things. So like in this PC, you'll see that you want to delete actually Autodesk, right? I mean, in my case, I had to do a complete clear wipe of everything. And you'll notice that it's actually in a couple of places, such as users, right? You have your, in my case, my name. And you have it usually a hidden file. If you don't actually see app data, right? Obviously, you have to click on it. We have to delete all the Autodesk all the roaming Autodesk. And then I, I even ha made sure with some register keys. So I'm not gonna show that on the video today because it's not really necessary. And if you do run into something where it's just not installing, of course you can let me know. Um, but in our case, one thing that I missed was of course not clicking on update because I had just deleted my 2024. 
In my case, I needed the base model. So of course, selecting Revit 2026, or in this case, 20, like say you did 2025, again, make sure it's not just the update, especially if you don't have Revit already installed. So of course you need the base. Now I do need to double check what it takes to get the updates and I'll get back to you on that one. But in our case, I did want to make sure that I did point that out as it was extremely important in installing the correct version. However, a couple things I did want to go over was, of course, opening Revit 2026, and it does take a little while to open. In our case, I want to make sure you know where the file is. I think I pointed it out earlier, but just in case. We'll see what it's like on really nice internet. It just, just pops up. No big deal. It's got all the pieces. In our case, you're going to make sure that you download either 2024. Honestly, these are the same file, just in two different Revit models. Right? In our case, we're going to see that it automatically updates to Revit 2026. Pretty beefy program. Now, in my case, this is that original 2024, and I went ahead and saved it as a 2026. But as you can see, when you open it, it'll immediately update it to a 2026. When you save, it will forever be a 2026 until, well, the next Revit model comes out. So um, this is actually the file, and as you can see, it opens pretty quickly, especially for an external hard drive. Not too shabby. And as you can see, not too, not too bad. But yes, um, we'll actually conclude it in the video here for today. And in our next tutorial video, we will go ahead and get started with the UI and get familiar with all the different things that are Revit. And just right off the bat, I don't know, I'm, I'm more of a fan of putting the project browser over here, so let me see if I can do that real quick. Nice. I don't know, I kind of like it like that. But that's just me, and we'll go ahead and end it here for today.